blood. You're the great young blood. Sorry, microphone. Hello! Hey, young blood. How are you all? You've obviously released a ton of songs. We're playing quite a few of them on K-Rock right now. Uh, you claim that what we're about to hear is the best stuff you've ever done in your entire life. Think you are so. so proud of this. Yeah, I am. It's me, man. It's like, I think like out of it, like, first of all, like, I love you all so fucking much. Been, like, been brutally honest. Like, I think the most beautiful thing about this whole thing is it's like, it completely came out of nowhere. Like this was just a group of people who came together just to feel like they wanted to belong somewhere. You know what I mean? So it has no boundary or no rules or no like, this is what it needs to sound like to be a thing. It's like when you come to a Youngblood show in 10 years or five years, I want it to go through the eras and everyone ha like, I, n I never want it to be like, this is the same shit for t three hours. You know what I mean? I want it to be like, whoa, that was from there, that was from there, that was from there, because it's all about feeling. That's what Youngblood is. It's the truth in feeling, in the moment, in the expression. That's why a lot of people don't get it until you see the show. And it's like 21st Century Liability was angry, and it was, and it was punk, and it was mental, and it was just like, yeah, standing up going, oh, I love you. Oh, uh, rock him. That was it, though. It's just about fuck it. You know what I mean? That's it. That first record was was about. It's in. It's in the album cover. It's about the constraints of the world on a generational crash of a wave where people were like, you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to be boxed in anymore. I don't want to stay silent. And it. And it, that's what brought us together. And then weird was 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 an accumulation of like the individual and. Bowie and Lou Reed and Warhol and fuck it, whatever you want to be. And this next one, it's kind of like, it's so internal for me. It's got this like, I remember, I love 70s punk in the UK. I love the Sex Pistols and the Damned and the Clash. And then like the way that moved into like New Wave and it moved into The Cure and The Smiths and and like, Susie Sue, and they were all, Susie Sue was at the Sex Pistols show, she's actually in all the pictures, and it became Inward and Joy Division, and that's where this record's gone, you know what I mean, I never wanted to be like, I'm never going to stand still, because it's all about eat us, and it's all about culture and the idea, and a song for me is like a feeling, right, it's like a fucking j medicine jar, that I'm like, ah! and I pull it out of myself and I put it in the jar and then I give it to everyone. And then, then they do, like, like that's the thing about Youngblood. It's like, it's not me, it's like them. It's like they took this and carried it and made it international and made it like a, an international culture. And that's what I always say. It's like when all the old rock and roll forums kind of like look at what we are and kind of can slag it off and don't understand it. I'm like, we're as relevant and we're as much of a movement as the Sex Pistols, the Damned, the Clash, uh, the, like the Ramones, Blondie, Lou Reed, Warhol. And if you don't think so, you're ignorant because you're not part of it. And that's cool because that's happened then. Because it's about them. They took it and they carried it. Like, look at everyone. You know what I mean? It's sick. What? You also got a tattoo to commemorate this new album, yeah, right? Did, On your yeah. ribs? Yeah. Hey. Is that henna? Yeah. <laughs> Is that real? So, That's are it. you gonna get a tattoo for every album? Like, what if you make like? 50 I tell. I, I think the thing about this is, it was just like, as like, I, I was gonna, I called this album Youngblood because I couldn't really like every name I came up with. Like, Youngblood said that, but better. You know, what I mean, it was originally gonna be called You Only Lose When You Stop Getting Up, but then I was like, Youngblood says that. Do you know what I mean? Like the name, the fucking idea, the the energy that is radiated from that says that. And um, I, and I was just like, I think the kind of the 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 culture got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. That the world kind of was like, it kind of got to the mainstream, and everyone's like, "Well, what the fuck is this?" So it's either too weird or too it it must be fake or it must not be real because it got so much bigger so quickly. The mainstream, it hit the mainstream, and everyone in the mainstream is like, what the fuck is this? And when something comes at you so quickly, it's often not real. It's franchise, it's a, an idea. 
And I think it's almost like a reclamation of like what it means in this, in this album. Someone said, someone explained it so well. It's like, it's like a podcast about us. Do you know what I mean? And the feeling of what it means to be on stage. As I say, it's not the hardest record I've ever written. It's not the fucking bounciest. It's not the thing, because I don't need it. Like, if you come to a fucking Youngblood show, Jesus, it's like fucking bang, 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 bang. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, no, cat. we have the most energetic show in the world right now. But you had every studio or across the world that said you can use our studios to do this album, and you chose to do it in a, in a bedroom. In a bedroom in Glendale. Yeah. <laughs> In, you know what I mean? In fucking in, in, in Glendale with the yeah. flies. Yeah, I know. Oh, you <laughs> have to say that. We know. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know. It, it was just like, I just thought, it's like you kind of get weird was like big. And then everyone was like, yo, come right with me. And I did, I, honestly, I'm sorry it took so fucking long to make this album, by the way. You know what I mean? It was like, it was like, I knew, I, I went into the north of England and I made a different album. There's like two, I made two albums before this one came out. I know, they're all, they'll all come to you eventually, do you know what I mean? But it, yeah, it, all that shit, it was like, it was a mental period of expression. And then I came out here and everyone was like, write with this person, do this, do this. And I was just like, oh, fuck. Like, and everyone was like telling me what, you should do this next. You should do this. All the big fucking... All the big creatures, you know what I mean, were going, do this next and do this next. And I was just like, no. And I went to my mate's bedroom and was like, that's where it should be made. I, I almost craved the feeling that I did when I wrote 20, but the first record, which was like made in a shithole in Soho. Because I just needed that, like, every, honestly, like, if I ever become a fucking rock star, like, slap me in the face. Do you know what I mean? Because I am one of you. Like, that's what I always want to be. I never, I never want to be like, hey, man, fucking yeah, man, rock and roll. Do you know what I mean? Because it's all bollocks. It's a, it's a complete front. It's like, it's a complete front that disguises confusion. You know what I mean? That's why I related to Bowie and Kurt Cobain and so much on this record. Like, not even sonically, just, and Lou Reed, like, in actual, like, personification of it. Because it was just like, you always got to put your feet in the fucking grass, man. So, right, this this one I played at Glastonbury, so you all semi-know it. It's called Tissues. Don't play it yet. Um, but this one was so cool. Cause I, I remember, like, starting it in um, in L.A., actually. This was this was this got started in one of the big studios before we went to Glendale. It got finished in Glendale. And... Um, I remember the st the session wasn't going well. It was just like, fuck. You know what I mean? It was just not vibing. I came in probably a bit moody or a bit dramatic. And um, and I, I was listening to Disintegration by The Cure. Does everyone know The Cure? Does everyone like The Cure? So I uh, I was listening to Disintegration by The Cure and I was just feeling that, that kind of happy, sad thing because the funeral just came out and it was like, yeah, fuck yeah. That just got written. I was like, what do I need? And I just I just was like... I wanted to kind of replicate this idea of being feeling so happy yet so sad at the same time. And that's such a trip because you're like, fuck. I don't know what to feel. I'm like, I feel excited, but I'm miserable. And that, you know what I mean? That's just life, isn't it? <laughs> so I told, I, told, I told the boys, I was like, put on close to me by the cure. You know, do, 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 do. And I was like, all right, cool, let's sample it. And everyone was a bit older, so like, we can't do that, blah, blah, blah. You got. So I was like, listen, let me email Robert Smith, because I met him at the NME Awards. Well, my mum met him. Does he have a Gmail or an AOL? What's Bro, Robert Smith app? Uh, iCloud, actually. In iCloud? Yeah, pr oh, pretty modern. That, yeah. But I'm, right, so I'm at the NME Awards in 2019, and like, I'm there, and I don't like deserve to be there. I'm like, fucking hell, whoa. No, in my head, I'm like, I mean, I'm like Robert Smith's there, and like what at the 1975 there, and all these big British artists there. I'm like, shit, whoa, crazy, and I'm in this like clueless fucking skirt outfit thing, right? And I, I took me mum, I took me mum to the Enemy Awards, right? And we won an Enemy Award. I was like, whoa, this is crazy, and like Robert Smith is in the corner. I can see his fucking haircut. You know what I mean? It's like this big. And I'm like, that's Robert Smith. And Robert Smith is why I wear eyeliner. You know what I mean? He was the first person that kind of like introduced androgyny to me. 
and I'm sorry we, if we got to hurry this shit up. I, I will, but I'm 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 telling the story. So fuck you all. Um, <laughs> Robert Smith's over there, and I'm just like, oh my god. I'm trying to think about a way to speak to him. I'm just kind of like want to like walk over and be like, like bump into him by accident. Be like, oh Robert, hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I like look over. I'm like, where the fuck's my mum? Where the fuck's she been? I'm like, she's fucking sat talking to Robert Smith, right? And I'm like, what? You know what I mean? I mean, mum's speaking to Robert Smith. Just like, I'm like, what is she saying? What is she saying? She's probably like, he's loved you his whole life. <laughs> Honestly, like, I, I, like, yeah, I was having to wash the fucking lipstick off his fucking school uniform for year. Whatever. And I'm like, what is she saying to Robert Smith? And I walk over to Robert Smith and my mum's talking to Robert Smith. And then I actually get intro to Robert Smith by my mother, which, which is a fucking trip in itself. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, my God. So, like, whatever. And then we stayed in contact. So... This song came out and it samples the cure and the cure let me use the sample to close to me, which is fucking mental to me. And I hope you love it. It's about the hesitation about the, the seconds before you want to feel love. Right? If that's from a lover, if that's from a brother, a mother, a fucking teacher or whatever, you take that breath in and go, <gasps> Am I gonna feel happy or am I gonna get fucking hurt right now? And you don't know. You know what I mean? We all feel that way, because it's like, I don't know whether to allow this person to be able to touch my heart or need to stay like this. Has anyone ever felt like that? You know what I mean? That's like everything. And I wanted this song to represent that happy, sad, melancholy thing to it. All right, here's Blue Flores' question. What steps do you take to get re-inspired when you feel like you're in some kind of a creative block? And I know Whoa. you kind of talked about that with The Cure, right? To be honest, it's such a weird one that it's like I'm I'm always a bit it's all it's almost like the other way. I'm almost too fucking creative for my own good sometimes. And I don't want to sound like sound like arrogant, like, oh yeah, fucking creative. It's like sometimes I gotta keep myself in the lines because I'll almost like create for the wrong reason that I can lose who I am sometimes. Do you know what I mean? I'm like sometimes I'm like, oh let's do this and let's go with that. Like my head's that mental. Sometimes I kind of got to click myself back into me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We don't have that problem. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like even them, it's like trying to, like Ed and Adam and Thomas and that, trying to fucking, oh my God, where the fuck are we going to go? It's like, whoa. You know what I mean? Sometimes it takes me, I've always had a problem of focus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you know what I mean? I've, I've always had like a, an issue of focus. It's never almost been a block. It's almost like it's been a... The best way to put it is like if I see if it's a road and that's a fucking block and I stay and I'm like, how am I going to get over that? Mm. It's almost like that's the fucking road. i got to stop driving off the cliff. You know what I mean? Or driving to the mountain. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. almost right. like that. Oh. Yeah. I've almost got to stay on the fucking road. This is from Brendan in Chicago. If you could collaborate with anybody dead or alive, who would it be? Is that you? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, who the hell? Oh, fucking hell. There's so many people. Dead. Freddie Mercury. David. David Bowie. Um, Lou Reed. Um, and then alive, Lady Gaga. Cool. Nickelback. Who do you want me to collaborate with? I mean, obviously, yeah. I love, yo, know, me and, I love 21 Pilots. Me and Tyler, me and Tyler are actually getting a lot closer. We keep seeing each other. So like, that, oh, that, that'd be, that'd be a dream come true for me. I think as a, as a, as a, he taught, he teaches me a lot. You know what I mean? He's obviously a little bit older than me and kind of, the thing about Pilots is they always, did their own thing and they sat like for example you listen to scale the nice compared to blurry face compared to the early stuff it's all a journey you go see a pilot show it's not just like the same shit it's like multiple albums and as i say like they are just as inspiring to me as someone like lou reed or bowie who has those albums that you just do your thing for a bit and that's like that's from that album that's from that and a fan base and a culture what is your favorite thing about your fans um Probably the sheer courage that I learn from you all every day. Like, I just look at you. And it's like, no cap, like, I go out into the world and as this fucking freaky guy and I'm kind of celebrated for it. And I know it's sometimes harder for you. 
But I just look at you every day and I fucking respect it. And I just adore it. And I think it's cool as fuck. You know what I mean? Honestly, I do. I think you're all cool as fuck. And never change and never conform. Because it's just all, you know what I mean? I'm going to play you a song next called Cruel Kids in a second. It's a great segue. And um, I said something the other week. It's like the, the definition of what cool, of what is cool and what is weird. It's all fucking, all confused, right? The way you are, like you are so expressionate. And the way the cool kid and the weird kid has been so fucking franchised into what it, what it is. I promise you, the cool kid in inverted commas, the cool kid ain't the cool kid, the cool kid is confused. So fucking confused. Just been told what to wear, been told what to listen to, been told what to love by society. Don't conform to that. And they will put you down because they are so intimidated by your individuality. They are so intimidated by a courage to step out into the world and not be what is normalized. And this song, the lyric consists of, I don't want to do what the cruel kids do because they're so confused. And I don't know, this has got spirit to it. And it's like, as I say, these sweet heroin and the, these songs, the song is so full of bangers like Sex Not Violence and fucking Emperor and Funeral and whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's all mental. But then there's these little two minute ideas that are needed to just put in these little two minute expressions that redefine songs. It's like when you listen to this album, it's like a, a journey. And this song's called Cruel Kids. Is that weird, young blood? when you hear a song you spent a lot of time working on and now you're watching people? It's Crazy. been inside of you, it's been inside your head, it's been inside your soul, and now it's kind of released now to the masses. You're watching people. I always get nervous, you. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know I mean, it's like such a trip. Yeah. It's like a bit of your spirit, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, fuck, will people like it? And it's and it's amazing to see you connect to it and like, because that's it, man. It's like all the words and the lyrics and the feeling of it. That's what I mean. This album's got such a spirit to it. Well, you, I mean, you're you've built a culture, and I think that you know you you can see it in the fans, and you can see it in this room. You can feel it in this room. What you what you've created and what you continue to create and. I just know for me personally, like as a little weird kid, I would have loved to have hear this, heard this type of music. Dude, and, and, and that's it. It's like it's kind of so two dimensional in, in, in the world. The world wants you to be so two dimensional. You know what I mean? And, and it's, it's, it's so crazy because everyone was like pushing me. It was like, everyone go. Everyone was like, go make a pop punk record. And I was like, and I'm fucking it, like, I love pop punk and it's great and it's down, but it's like, it's not in my soul. I did it for a bit, and I dabbled in it, and I loved it. But it, this, when I meet you all, you're all so much more interesting than a 2D idea, than a TikTok idea, than what is hit, than what is relevant in the moment to for fucking a week, and then it's dead. I didn't, I couldn't do that to you, because it'd be great, but then it'd be over. Do you know what I'm saying? I know it's so crazy. But like the the spirit you give me and the fucking passion that I feel and the intelligence and the artistic expression, it's fucking, it's, it's, it, it, you know what I mean? I can't limit it to a one little idea. Young Blood, the boy in the black dress. Killer. Thank you so much for coming Thank out here so today. Thank you so much for coming out, gang. I hope you love it. This album comes out Thank September 2nd. So it's called much. Young Blood. This is Young Blood. Thank Give it you up for guys. Young Blood. Love ya.